You think you're healthy because your blood work looks fine and you don't feel like death. That's nice. But your resting heart rate is quietly predicting your mortality and most aren't tracking it in a useful way. Let's find out how your ticker compares to the data. The resting heart rate test. A 2016 meta-analysis tracked 1.2 million people across 46 studies. This is as close to gospel as it gets. Here's how you measure it. Sit still for five minutes. No phone, no fidgeting, no simulation. Count your pulse for a full 60 seconds. Or you can use a fitness tracker first thing in the morning before getting out of bed. That number? That's your cardiovascular fortune teller. Here's what the study found. Every 10 beat per minute increment increases all-cause mortality risk by 9%. Compared to people with the lowest resting heart rates, those at 60 to 80 beats per minute had a 12% higher all-cause mortality. And those over 80 beats per minute had a 45% higher all-cause mortality. The relationship is linear. Starting from 45 beats per minute, risk increases continuously with with each increment. Cardiovascular mortality becomes significantly elevated at 90 beats per minute. This holds true even after controlling for blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and smoking. So how do you lower it? A 2018 meta-analysis of 191 studies found the strongest evidence. Endurance training, walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, done correctly, drops resting heart rate by three to six beats on average. The minimum effective dose, twice per week for at least four weeks. Longer programs beyond 30 weeks showed the biggest improvements. Sleep consistency can also matter. Same bedtime nightly helps keep the heart rate stable. Give this a test. Measure first thing in the morning before caffeine and start tracking. The longer you're willing to put in the work, the greater the improvement will be. Stop ignoring the basics and start measuring. Follow for day two of our testing week.